No, no, but I'm going to... Hey, look. You know, it's, it's all, you know, when I realize it's always cold in the morning. Hmm. And why? Well, I shouldn't be doing this in the morning. Oh, look, look, look. It's more, more, more important than that. Uh, I'm gonna say, right, right. I rushed in. I gotta take my stuff. Could, you think you can hold this? I, 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 I know you. I know you're, you're you're doing something else right now. You know, but just hold it for a second. I just gotta take this off right here. You know, put it where your files are right there. And uh, oh yeah, this this is my one of my fraternity jackets. You know, you know, I've had titles before. I know I'm an arts director emeritus, but my first title I can remember is my fraternity. See on our line. Um, as the soul preacher, soul preacher, mm -hmm. you know, this is predates all the hip hoppers and, and all that stuff that they be doing, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll put this here too. Now, I dig up there, I pick that up right there. You think I can? I mean, let me reach over. I can do it. I can do it, brother. Ah, I got it. Okay. Now, you know, this predates uh, all that stuff, like I said. But, you know, you realize that titles. So some people are important, you know, and also what's important, believe it or not, is the way you dress, the way you look. Like for instance, right now, well, I got a toothpick in my mouth. That's like being a, a hoodlum, you know what I mean? Bad boy, they say, you know, that's too bad, that's a bad boy. So, you know, I was a kid like that, you know, sometimes. Well, I wasn't too much into toothpicks, but, the, you know, uh, I'm gonna throw that right there in your, in your bucket. That's it. And your book's not too full there. They must like you. They come to your book. Look, they are saying. But you know, looks are important. I remember, uh, remember I told you, Arts Director Meredith, right? But when I was doing that, it was, it was WBAI Radio. One time we went to this conference in, uh, in, uh, in Boston. And we all had these black uh, t shirts with boldly on the back says WBAI 99.5 hmm. FM. I think it said FM. But you know, we all had this go to hold. A lot of us came because it was close to New York. And I happened to be in the back when they was walking. And it was like an effect. All these people, you know, this look, look like a, I hate to say it because I'm not, we look like a SWAT team invading the place. Very impressive. But you know, <clears throat> he's not bringing all this stuff up. Because you know, what you wear and what you look, it, it matters. There's a high unemployment rate in, in, in among the youth and in all of South Africa anyway. And you know, some of them, you know, they, they try to dress smart, whatever have you, but they still won't get a job. So in this day and age, it don't matter. But okay, like right now, okay, now you see, I, I got a hoodie on. Now a hoodie, you know, it's, it's good for the cold weather, but if I'm out there in the, in the world and I come to some, you know, some people see that, they think, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad guy, so you know, I take the hoodie down. You know, because I had to take the toothpick out too. Now look a little better. But then again, I got this cap on. You know, I look like something there. But I got the red. But I got the, the blue in the foot. I got to wait. I, I think I got to change one more time. Let me, let me put something else on because I want to match up with my. I know that. Well, yeah, I just. just hold, can you hold on to this one more time? Mm -hmm. I'm going to change my glasses. Okay? Because I want to be coordinated. I like to be coordinated. I'm going to put mm -hmm. these glasses on. And see, now with these glasses, I'm coordinated, but it's a different look. Why? Well, it's a different look. Right. People might think something else. So I can't be using these glasses. I gotta use something more uh, 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 supple. I think it's supple, it's a word subtle. Supple, subtle. I get always get confused with that. Those are them big words. I don't like to use them big words like that. Well, them tricky words, you know. So don't, I think I changed my glasses again because this this is not gonna work either because then people think something else on me, you know, so I'm gonna just have to put on my other glasses there like that. Like that. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Now look a more let's see if I turn my hat backwards. Then I look different then too. You now then people think something else, but I better I better keep this right. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, okay. Uh, yeah. But do, do you like this look? Yeah. That's, that's all right. It is all right. Okay, great. I can go on like this. So anyway, <clears throat> I bring all this up is because, like, you know, I tell, like I tell you, I travel a bit. And you know, the first thing when you're traveling, people talking to you, you notice they look down. You think they're looking down to avoid your eyes. No, they're trying to check out the footwear you're wearing, your shoes. 
-hmm. See, if wearing shoes, if they're, you know, if they're shiny or whatever have you, then they get a perception of you, you know? And that's a, that's a big thing, I've realized. Then they look and see if you're wearing a, like a, a, a watch, a timepiece, or, you know, or like, you know, whatever you're wearing, you know? Like, like see, I, I usually wear this, and I'm, I'm, I'm supple. Was it subtle? But I went on one of those things, right? So that, that that's that, that's all right. That's all right. Now you say, well, well, brother, why are you going on with this stuff about the thing? Because let me tell you what happened to me one time in Delray Beach, Florida, talking about perceptions. And now I know you say racial profiling, but I say perception. Now I was in Delray Beach, Florida. Now I had this thing in the mornings where I would get up, I wake up at four o'clock, about four thirty, I walk, you know. So I was in the other side of the railroad track, so to speak, and I walk, uh, walk uh, uh, through uh, through downtown Delray Beach, then through the rich section, mm -hmm. and then to the beach where I go on the beach and I do my you know my little prayer and meditation and right for before the, the first light. Say I like first light, and that first light gives me that that rays in your eyes and gives you like tranquility, you know. So that's a good time. And then you know I I, I finish exercise and I walk back. And you always meet nice people along the way because they're joggers, you know. And we say we always get the high, 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 whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But when I started this, I don't know what came over me because, you know, I'm from the South Bronx. And we got a code in the South Bronx, but we don't go to the police for nothing. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 you don't go to the police for nothing. But some strange reason, I don't know what, what happened. I, kind of, I went to the police station there and I talked to the guys. I said, look, I get up in the mornings. And I go to the thing, you know, I, you know, I do, will there be a problem with that? Now, first they were suspicious because, you know, I had very long locks, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I guess they call them dreadlocks because the bottom of all these paintings, they say, hey, you know, he said, well, I'm dreading, but they're really just locks. You know, locks have been all over, you know, they are con religion, they have locks before they go to the priesthood, you know, but said the Bible, the Samson had locks. They say, these, well, you know what I'm saying? But the point is, he was a little suspicious because at the same time, around about that time, there was some you know, cat in, in, in California that was walking, and they would always hassle him, and he sued the state. So this guy was thinking, like, maybe, you know, I said, no, no, I just, uh, we straighten it out. But he said, okay, here's what I do. So he gave me his car, the police, I think he was a, he was a lieutenant or something like that. And he wrote on the back, please afford, you know, Mr. No, 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 all the accoutrement, blah, 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 blah. You know? And so I, I put it in my thing, because I always carry when I walk, I had to have my ID. Because I was like there by myself, I, you know, if something happened, I could be disappeared. It was about that mm -hmm. time when people would have disappeared in other countries. Who knows what happened in the States? Anyway, mm -hmm. so I had my, 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 my driver's license, you know, I had this on the other side. And so I figured, no, no. Sure enough, sure enough, the second night, the second morning, I should say, I walked in. Right in front of me, a police car, right? And, and you know we, and we have the we have the drivers on the other side. So door up, up, pops out this woman, you know, woman police officer. She comes to me and she comes up to me all aggressive. The first thing she said, you know, so like she tried to look like she was. But anyway, she said, "Haven't I dated you before?" I go like, "Nah, you have to understand. We're in the South. I knew what she was doing. They were trying to get me to talk." trying to get me to say something untort. I know what that word means, untort. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I didn't say no, I just, mm-hmm. Because, see, see, if I'd have said something like, you know, or I mumbled or something like that, they, they have a perception on me. So since I didn't say anything, they, she, she had to, you know, she, she had to back up a bit. And she said, you have some ID? You know, so I pulled out my thing and showed her my, you know, and the bill and I showed her the driver's license on the other side. You know, the, the captain's uh, thing was there. He says, oh, well, let me see that. Pull that out, you know, pull that out, give it to us. You know, captain, so, so. I, I still, I said, well, so, like that. And she read the back of it. And she changed her attitude. Well, Mr. Uh, you see, I took it back. And believe it or not, I was there for about three, four, five months. Never a problem. Ain't that something? I don't know what made me do it, but that's what happened. So what I'm trying to say is you always have to watch wherever you are, your articulation and your dress code 
and you can't fly off at the handle. Not fly off the handle, but you know you can't fly off the handle. You know you you, you can't be all audio drama <laughs> in every situation. You got to, you know go with the thing. But this I just wanted to share that with you. You know just this because this is just one of those dispatches from the arts director emeritus. You know that's the title I got. From. That would be me, T, from the Pattersons, taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I always suspect. Mm -hmm. <laughs>